Algebra 2, Chapter 9.1, Exercise 1 through 10. I'm going to do in this video lesson the problems 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, and 9. These problems deal with inverse variation. 1. Let the area of rectangle be 16 square units on the coordinate plane shown draw all rectangles having positive integer lengths and widths. So we're going to go to this point. And if you saw my previous video lesson, you saw that we had a similar problem. And here, as our independent variable, we're going to have length for this table. And as our dependent variable, we're going to have width. So in this situation, we have a rectangle already drawn whose length is 1 and whose width is 16. And so if we have a rectangle with an area of 16 whose length is 1 unit, its width, in order to create an area of 16 square units, is going to be 16. And then we're going to take the next highest integer that is a factor of 16, that would be 2. So if we have a length of 2, what width is going to correspond to an area of 16? 2 times 1 equals 16. Well, that's going to be a width of 8. Next factor, integer, of 16 is 4. So 4 times what for a width or equal 16? Well, 4 times 4. And now, what is our next integer on the way to 12? I mean, way to 16, it's going to be, again, uh, this would be 8. So we have a length of 8. What times 8 equals 16? That is going to be 2. And finally, if we have a length of 16, our width is going to be what multiplied by 16 equals 16, and that is 1. And now we've done that. And it says, uh, draw all rectangles. So we've created the table first. We already have the length 1 by width 16 drawn. So now we're going to go to the length 2 by width 8. So we come up here, uh, vertical from the length axis all the way up to, to 8. And then we come over here. And so we have one rectangle drawn right here. Now next, we're going to go to the 4x4 four four rectangle. And in red, we proceed vertically up to 4 on the width axis. And then come over here. So now we've created our second rectangle, which is a square, which is a special case of a rectangle. Next, we're going to go to a length of 8. A length of 8 corresponds to a width of 2. So there's this rectangle here. And lastly, I'm going to purple. We have a length of 16. And the width that corresponds to a length of 16, to create a, a rectangle with an area of 16, is here at width equals 1. So we'll go over here, and there we have it. Now next, it says, uh, after drawing the rectangles, draw a smooth curve through their upper right corners. So I'm going to now do that and I'm going to start up here and it's going to be kind of tough to draw this freehand on this uh, this pen I have here so I'll just do the best I can. I'm going to draw all this before I could probably do it a little bit better on a dry erase board but it's going to just have to be what it is. Okay, so that's going to be more or less correct. That's somewhat of a curve. 
was it perfect? Anyway, uh, the curve being drawn allows us to interpolate the, between the lines. So if we have a length of six, for instance, what we go up here, it looks like about uh, two and a half. All right, so if we have uh, two and a half on six, we should end up with about 16. So that's going to be uh, five times six, which would be 30. Uh, wait a second. Let's do that here. We have six times 2.5. That's going to be 15. So it's not, not exactly right, but, but close. You can see that but that's that'll be about right. So anyway, we're going to, we're going to leave it there and go on to problem two. And problem two I include here in because I normally just include the odd number problems. But what we have here is width or our length times width is equal to 16. So it says write an equation curve that you drew and evaluate, uh, and evaluate one. Well, actually, that's a, a prior exercise that we did. I'm going to assume this for problem one here is what I'm going to do. And what we're going to do is take, we want the width of a rectangle in terms of the length L. So width, to get width by itself, we have to divide by length. And length over length. Cancel on the left side, so we have width is equal to 16 over L. So we can see that whatever we put in for L, no matter what it is, is going to produce the proper width. If we put in 4 for length, 16 divided by 4 is 4. If we put in 16 for length, 16 divided by 16 equals 1. So that's going to be our answer to. Problem number two. Okay, next problem three. Write an equation relating variables and use it to answer the question. So this, these are going to be the instructions for the rest of the problems in the three lesson. Given that y varies inversely as x and y equals eight when x equals three, what is the value of y when x equals 12. One thing we can look at is a distinction between inverse variation and direct variation and direct variation. So I'll put direct variation. Direct variation is what would be a, a standard linear function. If we put y equals mx. This will be an example of direct variation and m being the correlation coefficient, so slope, right, or would be a line. That would be an example of direct variation. Well, inverse variation would be if we have It could start out is with if we have y times x is equal to a correlation coefficient. And if we want to solve for y, to do that, if we divide by x, we end up with y is equal to our. Constant of correlation. So we get y is equal to a divided by x. So uh, let's go ahead. It says y varies inversely as x, and y equals 8 when x equals 3. Okay, our constant variation. So we have 
y is equal to our constant variation over x. As we go to the right, we see that y is equal to 8 when x is equal to 3. So we can cross multiply the 3 over here to work to the right a, our constant is equal to 8 times 3, which equals 24. So now our equation uh, was, is going to be y is equal to our constant of variation, which is 24, over x. And now we are asked the question, what is the value of y when x equals 12? So y equals 24 over x, which in this case is 12. So y is equal to 24 divided by 12, which is 2. So this is going to be our answer. OK. Uh, one way you could also work this out is you could say uh, yx or xy is equal to our constant variation 24, and then you can divide by x to get that way. Next on the problem, same instructions, but uh, we have a word problem. The time t in hours that it takes a pump to empty a tank of water varies inversely with pumping rate r in gallons per hour. And it takes three hours to empty a tank of water when the pump rate is 80 gallons per hour. How long does it take to empty a tank when the pump rate is 60 gallons per hour? Well, what we have is time is equal to a constant variation, A, which we don't yet know, over our rate. And where, how we get there is if we say RT, rate times time, equals a constant variation, we can, we can divide by we divide by R and get this relationship here. And we could have just as easily got R is equal to A over T. Okay, so now let's go ahead and, and work out the specific problem here. T is equal to a, well, well t gives us, uh, it takes three hours to empty, empty a tank, so we're going to replace t with three, it takes three hours to empty a tank, this pumping rate is 80 gallons per hour, so we have three is equal to a, a constant variation, over 80. And so cross multiplying to 80, A, our constant variation, is equal to 3 times 80, or 240. So next, having found out what A is, below here in the next line, we write T is equal to our constant variation, which is 240, over R. And working to the right, we're trying to find out how long it takes to empty the tank when the pumping rate is 60 gallons per hour. So we'll take 240 instead of this time, instead of dividing by 80 like we did earlier, we're going to divide by 60. And so 240, 240 divided by 60 is going to simplify to 4, as in 4 hours. So uh, one thing it really helps to do is just to logically think through this because you have to consider that if it took you three hours to empty a tank when you were going at 80 gallons per hour, is a lower rate going to take less time or more time to empty that tank of water? Well, obviously, it's going to take more time because the rate is lower. So logically thinking through can help you see if you have a reasonable answer and be confident with the answer. Next on problem seven, 
number of presents P that Tim can afford to buy varies inversely with their average cost in dollars. And so basically what you're talking about is the cost of presents, the number of presents times the average cost is going to be equal to our constant of variation. So which one are we going to try to find out here? Well, what average cost would three presents have? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find solve for cost by dividing by the number of presents. So our average cost is going to be the presence going to be the cost of variation divided by number of presents. And working to the right, what do we have? If Tim can afford five presents, when the average cost is $12, so average cost $12 is equal to our constant variation, if we not yet know, over five. And then cross multiplying, we have our constant variation A is equal to 12 times 5 or 60. So therefore, our average cost is going to be equal to our cost of variation, which we calculated to be 60, over P, the number of presents. And working to the right, it's asking uh, what would happen if we have three presents. Well, we'll substitute in three for P. So our average cost is going to be 60 divided by three. So C C is going to be equal to uh, 20. And be twenty dollars be our average cost per present. There we have that. Okay, next on our problem nine. For fundraiser, members of the booster club wash cars by hand. The time t in minutes takes to wash a car varies inversely as the number of people p who are washing the car. So we have the time t times the number of people p is going to be equal to our constant of variation. And we are asked at the end how many people would be needed to wash a car in nine minutes. So we're going to solve for p because that's we want to find how many people. So to find how many people, we divide both sides of this equation by t. So we go right here, we have p is equal to our constant variation over t. And in the specific uh, initial situation we're given, if two people can wash a car in 20 minutes, so if two people, and we put a over time, which is 20, and solving for a, if we cross multiply, a is going to be equal to 2 times 20, which equals 40. So now, working below, we have number of people is equal to our constant variation, 40, over our time. And working to the right, P is equal to 40 over the number of people uh, available or needed. And so what we have is, is P, number of people, is equal to 40 divided by 8, which is going to be 5 people. And again, let's just kind of think this through. It took two people to wash a car in 20 minutes. And so if you have less time, less time is going to require more people. So that's, that's it. That's the last one. I'm going to do in this, in this situation. So good luck on all your problems. Good luck. And thanks for being here.